You are listening to More Than CRM, powered by Tour de Force, a monthly podcast dedicated to discussing a variety of topics as they relate to success in life and in business. Let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to More Than CRM. I'm your host, Chloe Nucius, and in this episode, we're going to be discussing personalized marketing with Adam Mertz, VP of Marketing and Strategy at Acton. Welcome, Adam. It's great to have you. Thanks, Chloe. It's great to be here. Would you mind starting out by sharing a little bit about your marketing background as well as what you do currently with Acton? Sure. So I'm VP of Marketing and Strategy here at Acton. And in general, I've been in marketing roles, product and marketing roles over the course of the past 20 years. So I've been purchasing a lot of marketing technology, but I've also been pretty deeply engaged in driving MarTech that supports what I would call, and what we're kind of having a conversation today, the new era of marketing. Um, So I've been doing that for, for 10 plus years. So excited to be engaged in this conversation with you today. So as marketers, we know the trend right now, it's moving towards a more highly personalized approach. And do you think this is more of a passing trend or do you think personalized marketing will be around for the long haul? Yeah, well, I really think two things that number one, the major disruption has gone on in marketing. And when I say major disruption, I think it's the biggest disruption that's ever occurred in the marketing profession over the course of the last 10 or 20 years with the advent of the internet and um, everything else that's gone on that has, for the most part, increased everybody's, whether you're in your consumer or in your business life, if you will, your expectation of relevancy. You know, that has been driven by the ability for you to just go out and do so much more research than what you could have ever done in the past. But number two, I think that why this is going to be such a, you know, not just a passing trend, but something that's here for the long run is that at the end of the day, growth for every business is the number one priority. And if you think of this kind of simple equation, higher engagement equals more leads, which equals more business, which equals more growth. And so the big question that marketers have is how can you drive higher engagement? And a lot of that has to do with providing a more personalized experience and back to that relevancy and and meeting and exceeding people's expectations to have relevant engagement content and topics that uh, that relates to whatever it is that they're looking to purchase. Yeah, absolutely. And you talked about this disruption that's happened and there's kind of been a big shift in marketing. So what kind of specific challenges of the more traditional approach to marketing, do you think this personalized approach helps to alleviate? Yeah, I touched on that a little bit and love to expand on that more because I think there's three big marketing challenges that this more personalized approach really helps to alleviate. The first is around improving conversions. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, that's most critical to get people who are either anonymous or unknown visitors to your website to become known and then to continue to convert to different stages in the marketing buying funnel, if you will. Personalized marketing can help improve conversions. But number two, what it can also do simultaneously is reduce the amount of manual work that's needed to engage people in a more personalized way or just to to drive your marketing campaigns overall. So it's increasing efficiency. And that's a huge challenge that many marketers have because most marketers today have this dual challenge where they've been tasked to help drive growth for their company, yet their budget is remaining flat. Or in some cases, it's actually maybe slightly going down. And so they need to figure out ways to work as productive and efficiently as possible while, again, improving those conversion rates. And the third thing that I would say kind of relates to the first one around improving conversions. The biggest challenge that marketers today simply have is understanding what is converting so they can do more, you know, create more content that is driving those conversions. They can execute more campaigns that are converting at higher rates. Almost like before you can improve those conversions, you need to have better visibility and better understanding. And I think that this new personalized marketing and the technologies that are now uh, available can really help marketers to better understand what is converting. That kind of has touched on how this approach has kind of helped improve 
the results that markets have been having. And I read a study recently that reported um, actually 30% increase in business results from marketing personalization. So I was wondering, why do you think this approach has been so valuable for a lot of marketers? Well, I think it's been so valuable because at the end of the day, people respond to relevancy. So whether, again, you're buying something for your company, for your business, or you're buying something in your regular uh, life outside of work, you respond to relevancy. Maybe the easiest analogy off the bat is that if you're going to something like Amazon and you're looking at a particular product, you see relevant other products related to that product that you're looking at. You might click on those. And because that's relevant to what you're searching to buy, and maybe it's something slightly different, maybe it's something slightly better or whatever, but the point is it's relevant to to what you're looking for. I'll use this for a moment and talk about this concept of website personalization. You know, this is an area that act on as a marketing automation leading vendor for many years now. We've been helping people to move in this direction. A newer area is around helping companies to better personalize web experiences. And so we now work with a lot of companies to drive that side of it. And so what's been found is that when you have a more personalized website experience that's leveraging the behavior data of people, that you end up increasing the amount of time that people spend on your website and you end up increasing the number of pages that are viewed. And all of that ends up leading to, again, going back to driving more conversion. So that's an example of how valuable this approach can be. And another example, though, that I think is is uh, super relevant and most marketers could relate to, where everything remains the same, your content-wise, your offer, uh, et cetera, you're sending an email campaign out. But you have simply maybe have a system in place that can learn the times when people have been engaging. And simply when you send out that next email to those 2,000 or 3,000 or 10,000 contacts of yours, that the system system says, oh, for person one, for Joe, they've been engaging. They were on our website. They opened emails. They downloaded case studies or looked at different videos or content, etc. between 7 and 10 p.m. at night. That must be a night person. And whereas Chloe, you might be a morning person where you get in early and before every everything gets going, when you're doing your research on something that you might be buying, you are looking at companies' websites, you're opening emails, you're responding to offers and, and so forth, uh, maybe between 9 and 11 in the morning or between 7 and 9 in the morning. The point is, is that there's now the capability for systems to be able to understand, track those kind of timestamps, if you will, of, of those behaviors, and then incorporate that into something like an email that, that gets sent out and do that automatically. And to come full circle back to your question, which is the value that it's showing, when marketers are doing that and when they have a system like that in place, and that is something that, that we've been able to work with customers on as they implement our, our technology, they've seen in the range of 20% increases in open rates to emails, the same sort of 20% increase in click-through rates. So same email, same subject line, same offer, just done at a time that is more relevant, that is more personalized to how they've been engaging has led to those huge increases. So it can be, it can have a really big impact. It's not just about content. It's about even in this particular example, the time you might end up sending an email out. Yeah. And I find that whole concept very exciting. I think that's going to be very valuable in in itself. Obviously, Acton is a marketing automation platform. And I was wondering what role do you think that marketing automation itself plays in executing such a personalized marketing strategy? We believe that it's time in general for marketers to adapt at the individual level and to make marketing more personal. Where I see marketing automation needing to go, I really believe that it has to evolve. It has to it has to evolve to help meet those needs of marketers. It has to evolve beyond just simple automation. By that, I mean it needs to turn the data that oftentimes is sitting in that marketing automation system, as well as other systems that may or may not be connected, it has to turn that data into insights, provide better recommendations on what a marketer should be doing for their content, for their campaign, when they're sending emails and so forth. In the best case scenario, where marketing automation needs to go is not just to provide better insights and to provide better recommendations, 
but I'll, I'll playfully use the term of it needs to have auto magic action, meaning it needs to just take that data and not just provide that recommendation, but automatically do something like in my example around, you know, you send that email to 2000 people and it just has the, the time stamp data from their behavior. It automatically sends it to Joe at 8 p.m. and to you at 8 a.m. So that's where I think marketing automation needs to go. It needs to support that move to being able to not just segment at a group level, but to really have individualized personalization and to really turn that data into insights, recommendations, and those automatic actions. I think that's a really powerful tool for for any marketer. I'd personally really like to know, and I think our listeners will be interested as well, where do you see the future of adaptive marketing heading? Yeah, so... I think that every organization is trying to become better at omni-channel marketing. I think that's really important. I think where adaptive marketing is going, though, and, and where the future of that is, again, going back to, number one, individual-level personalization. I think in addition to that individual-level personalization, the second big thing is around data. It's around using that data and moving that away from just report and bar charts and, and, and line graphs, if you will, to analytics that guide, that provide those recommendations. And then as I was mentioning, where the future of adaptive marketing is going is about just automated learning in key areas. And then you think about marketing and sales. And, and you know, a lot of times there's a big brick wall between marketing and sales. It's about helping marketing to provide sales better visibility around what's going on. But even more than that, to even guiding, just like some of those examples I gave around guiding marketing actions, guiding sales on the next best action. And at the end of the day, where adaptive marketing is going, it's all about enabling relationship marketing. It's all about driving better and deeper and more relevant engagements. Absolutely. So Adam, I really appreciate you sharing your insights with us today. Do you have any last thoughts you'd like to leave our listeners with? Yeah, sure. You know, I think the the main thing that I would say, last thought, is that you might be listening to here and say, wow, that adaptive marketing, that sounds really interesting. But also, is that kind of scary technology? Is that something that's just for large corporations? It's really important that if you're listening to this podcast, that you know that adaptive marketing, in my opinion, really isn't just for those those with huge marketing teams and, and that are at big enterprise companies. When and if it's done right, this is going to be huge for smaller marketing teams because the whole idea is not to require a bunch of manual work, a bunch of setup work, but have the system be learning, have the system provide those automatic actions and provide those recommendations. The whole concept here is not necessarily some technology that a large team with data scientists need to leverage. This is about, at the end of the day, being able to have the system learn and do a lot of that for you without you having to do a lot of work and and hire a lot of people in order to uh, get better results for your marketing efforts. So that would be, I think, my important last thought that I would love all the listeners here on your podcast uh, to leave with. Be sure to join us next month when we talk with Spencer English from ABCO and Cassandra Evans from Tour de Force about millennials in the workplace. Until next time, this has been More Than CRM, powered by Tour de Force.